All right, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Big Rich, Queens, New York City, where we get busy. Summer, Saturday afternoon, hot, hazy, lazy. Couldn't choose a better location to be. New York City, you know how we do business. Mob Spotlight, let's get right into it. Gentlemen, you know the rules. Gentlemen, you know the rules. Wipe your feet on the rug. Throw some smoke in the atmosphere. I'm about to light up a little bit of Elmer's glue. Salute to my GGC crew. You know how we do. Let's get right into the Buffalo crime family, better known as the Magadino crime family. Let's get right into it. Saturday afternoon cypher. Let's go. The Buffalo crime family, also known as the Magadino crime family, the New York State crime family, the Tadaro crime family, and the arm is the Italian-American mafia crime family based in Buffalo, New York, United States. The family has operated throughout western New York, Erie, Pennsylvania, and Hamilton, Ontario. The Buffalo family have strong connections with the Hamilton-based Lupino and the Papalia family. The current boss of the Buffalo crime family allegedly is Joseph A. Big Joe Todaro Jr., who has been running the crime family since his father, Joseph E. Leadpipe Joe Todaro Sr., retired. In the early 1900s, Angelo Palmieri was the first boss in Buffalo. By 1912, he stepped down assuming the roles of underboss while handing the title of boss to Joseph DiCarlo. In 1921, Stefano Magadino, who had immigrated first to New York City from Castellameri, the Gulf of Sicily in 1902, fled to Buffalo, New York to avoid murder charges related to the death of Camillo Caezo in Avon, New Jersey, who had killed Magadino's brother, Pietro. Buffalo crime family boss Joseph DiCarlo died in 1922, and Magadino succeeded him as boss. The Buffalo crime family gained power during the Prohibition era through bootlegging. In 1931, the family boss Stefano Magadino became an original member of the commission, the governing body of the American Mafia. Magadino's strongest ally in the commission was his cousin, Joseph Bonanno. The two Mafia bosses were from the same Sicilian town of Castellameri de Golfo. The commission decided in 1931 that Stefano Magadino and his, bus and his Buffalo family would control Ontario, Canada, and that Joseph Bonanno and his Bonanno family would control Quebec, Canada. The Buffalo family remained strong and relatively united until his leadership was challenged in the 1960s. It then split into two factions as they tried to assassinate Magadino. Quote, Magadino's empire began to crumble in 1968 when police found 500,000 stashed away in Magadino's funeral home and his son's attic. At the time, Magadino had been telling his underlings that money was tight and he could not afford to pay them Christmas bonuses. People began to stop trusting him when we found all that money. The internal war continued after Magadino's death from natural causes on July 19, 1974, but ended in the early 1980s when Joseph Todaro Sr. became the boss. When Todaro Sr. took over the Buffalo family, many members had been operating within the Laborers International Union of North America, Local 210, to avoid police scrutiny for years while they continued to operate illegal activities. In 1989, Joseph Todaro Sr. and his son Joseph Todaro Jr. were identified in an FBI gambling investigation as the leaders of the 45 made member Buffalo Mafia family. The FBI investigation claimed that Joseph Todaro Sr. and Jr. were in control of various criminal activities that included labor racketeering, bookmaking, loan sharking, and narcotics trafficking. It was also claimed that Joseph Todaro Jr. was running the Mafia family on behalf of his semi-retired father, Joseph Todaro Sr., who was splitting time between his Tonawanda and Florida homes. The FBI stated that local 210 member Leonard F. Falzone controlled a loan sharking operation for the Tadaros and the brothers Victor and Daniel Sansanese, who were also members of local 210, controlled a bookmaking operation for the Tadaros. It was also revealed that during the investigation, the FBI had planted a recording device in Falzone's union-owned car in 1988, but that recording device was unable to provide any evidence linking the Tadaros to any illegal gambling. The information provided by the listening device planted in Falzone's 87 Buick was responsible for the dismantling of the Torina drug ring, which was doing more than $2 million in street sales of cocaine annually in the Buffalo area. Special Agent George Preston, chief of the DEA's Buffalo office, told reporters this is a mob-controlled drug ring. G. Robert Langford, special agent in charge of the Buffalo FBI office, said 
conversations overheard in the car of Leonard Falzon indicated that this drug operation was being directed by the mob hierarchy in Buffalo, although there was not enough evidence to charge Falzon or Todaro in the ongoing investigation at the time. Early arrests in this case included known mob associates Joseph Pepe Canizado, Albino Shasha Principe, and Salvatore Sam Naples Napoli. The investigation into the Torino drug ring revealed Todaro and Falzon were involved in the Las Vegas to Buffalo pipeline for cocaine and other illegal activities. On March 20, 1990, Las Vegas police arrested three Buffalo natives, Louis Giambroni, Joseph Amoya, and Lawrence Panero. All three were identified as associates of the Buffalo mob. Charles Torino, a Buffalo native who was described as a key link in the Buffalo to Las Vegas drug pipeline, had previously worked as a pit boss in a Las Vegas casino. In 1990, Canadian police arrested 14 suspects in a drug ring that had connection to organized crime in Buffalo and Niagara Falls. According to a law enforcement official who spoke under the condition of anonymity, any drug activity or any organized crime activity in St. Catharines, Hamilton, and Niagara Falls must be approved by the Buffalo family, one lawman said. The mob families in those cities and in Toronto answer to Buffalo. Those arrested were described as associates of a Niagara Falls, New York businessman named John Anticoli, who was serving a 10-year term in federal prison. Law enforcement told reporters that two of the suspects are considered high-ranking members of a Hamilton organized crime family under the indirect control of the Buffalo mob. Anticoli was described by the FBI as one of the biggest drug dealers ever arrested in western New York. He pled guilty to possessing 270 pounds of marijuana, conspiracy to distribute cocaine, tax evasion, and failure to pay taxes on cocaine profits. Of the 14 suspects arrested, Carmen Barilato, Nicodemo Buzzesi, and Dominic Vaccaro were said to be made members of a Hamilton-based mafia family that reports to Buffalo's organized crime leaders. In 1996, Joseph Todaro Sr. and his son Jr. were listed among 24 alleged organized crime figures who were accused of influencing the Laborers International Union of North America since the 1960s. The Laborers Local 210 Force, Joseph Jr., Frank Bifulco, Salvatore Cardinal, Joe Catanzaro, Leonard Falzone, Sam Frangiamore, Bart Mazzara, Robert Panaro, Donald Penapinto, Joseph A. Pieri, Joseph R. Pieri, Charles Pusateri, Joseph Rosado, Danny Sansonese Jr., Victor Sansonese, Louis Sicurella, and Vincent Jimmy Sicurella out of the union. In late 1996, the Buffalo family, along with the Los Angeles crime family, joined forces to take over a loan sharking and auto insurance fraud racket in Las Vegas controlled by Herbert Blitzstein, a Chicago outfit associate. The L.A. underboss, Carmen Milano, along with L.A. soldier Stefan Sino and Louis Caruso and L.A. associates Johnny Bronco and Peter Caruso, originally planned to rob and steal Herbert Blitzstein's jewelry. After robbing Blitzstein's, the L.A. mobsters planned to have Buffalo family soldier Robert Bobby Panaro fence his stolen jewelry. Carmen Milano decided that the Buffalo family boss, Joseph Todaro Sr., would receive a piece of Blitzstein's Las Vegas rackets. The job of robbing Blitzstein was given to Peter Caruso, but Caruso changed the plan and decided to murder Blitzstein and take over his Las Vegas operations. On January 6, 1997, L.A. associate Antonio Davi and Richard Friedman shot and killed Blitzstein in his own home. In 1997, the Buffalo family's Canadian factions boss Johnny Papalia and his lieutenant Carmen Barilato were murdered by Kenneth Murdoch. When the police arrested Kenneth Murdoch in 1999, he decided to become a government witness. A disgracia! Murdoch told the authorities that he was ordered by brothers Pasquale, Pat Musitano, and Angelo Musitano of the Musitano crew to murder both Johnny and Carmen. According to Murdoch, the Musitano brothers had been fed up with being a satellite crew of the Buffalo family and having to pay tribute money to the family. Murdoch also claimed that he was waiting for Pat Musitano to approve the murders of four Lupino crew members, Natale Lupino and Vincent Lupino, the two sons of Giacomo Lupino, and Dominic Violi and Giuseppe Violi. 
the two sons of Paolo Violi. Also revealed by Murdoch was that Pat Musitano had discussed with Quebec Mafia boss Vito Rizzuto, Gaetano Penepinto, about the debts of Johnny Pops and Carmen Barilato. Eventually, the Canadian intelligence agencies were convinced that the Musitano brothers did not act alone in the murders of, of Johnny Pops, Carmen Barilato, and Enio Mora. In 1998, these factors led Lee Coppola, veteran organized crime reporter of the Buffalo News, to write an article titled The Withered Arm. In it, he stated, today's Buffalo mob, disorganized and all but penniless, is a far cry from its heyday and that the last visible remnants of mob power in Buffalo disappeared, unquote. However, Coppola's pronouncement was premature. In 1999, Joseph E. Todaro Sr., along with his son, Joseph Jr., and 16 others were named in a civil racketeering lawsuit for controlling Local 210 through the years by various racketeering acts. The court complaint identified Joseph E. Todaro Sr. as boss and his son Joseph Jr. as underboss of the Buffalo family and the owners of La Nova Pizzeria. Todaro Sr. never belonged to Local 210, but his son Todaro Jr. served as Local 210 business manager in 1990 before resigning. The charges were based on the testimony of Ronald M. Fino, a former business manager of Local 210, before he became an FBI informant. A disgrace! Over the course of the latter part of the 20th century and the first part of the 21st century, the Buffalo crime family declined in influence. Factors included older members slowly turning away from the organization, younger Italian-Americans showing no interest in its operations, an 11-year federal operation that forced the family out of Local 210 between 1995 and 2006, introduction of the New York Lottery depriving the family of a major revenue source, illegal gambling revenue, and the rise of Joe Jr.'s legitimate pizzeria business. Todaro Sr. retired in 2006, leaving many in law enforcement to believe Leonard Falzone had taken his place. However, others thought he was only acting as the front boss for the Todaros and that Joseph Todaro Jr. was the acting boss while his father became the senior statesman for the family. The FBI continued to release the crime family's organizational charts until 2006. The Niagara Falls reporter indicated... Leonard Falzone was promoted to the top spot after Joe Todaro Sr. reportedly stepped down in 2006. After the deaths of Todaro Sr. in 2012 and Benjamin's Sonny Nicoletti in 2013, rumors swirled about who would lead the family. In 2012, Matt Gerta, crime reporter of the Buffalo News, said that many believed the family had expanded into the new millennium through telemarketing, pump-and-dump stock scams, and internet pornography, with the family expanding its operations nationwide. The same year, Dan Herbeck wrote an article about Ronaldo Fino called Life After Local 210 for the FBI's Inside Guy. The article indicated Fino was skeptical of the Justice Department's claim that mob influences were totally removed from Local 210 and the Laborers International. Ronald believed the federal trusteeship the government established to clean the union didn't go far enough. Additionally, the Toronto Star's organized crime reporter Peter Edwards indicated that in 2013 the Buffalo crime family was seeking to revive itself from recent losses through loan sharking and the Casino Niagara in Canada on the American border. In the late 2000s, news broke out about a homeowner association scam alleged to have ties to the Buffalo mob. A witness told the FBI that the Silver Lining Construction Company was controlled by the New York mob and that its owner, Leon Benzer, thought of himself as a soprano because of his association with attorney John V. Spilotra, the nephew of Vegas mobster Tony Spilotra. Investigators also disclosed a key player in one of the HOA takeovers was Paul Satelli, who was known to have ties to the Buffalo mob. According to George Knapp, IT reporter for CBS News affiliate KLAS News Now Channel 8 in Vegas, the FBI said Satelli is affiliated with the Buffalo mob. Joseph Bravo, another defendant in the HOA scam, was indicted with Paul Satelli for being a part of a Las Vegas to Niagara Falls cocaine trafficking ring run by the Buffalo mob from the late 1980s to the mid-1990s when it was considered the dominant La Cosa Nostra family on the streets of Las Vegas. 
Canadian intelligence indicated a new crime lord linked to the powerful Todaro crime family has been installed over the Golden Horseshoe region of Ontario. According to CSIC intelligence, the new yet identified Buffalo boss had a strong relationship with outlaw bikers, unlike his predecessor, Johnny Papalia, who refused to work with them. As a result of this new yet shaky alliance, organized crime expert Detective Sergeant Peter Polsetti of the CISC said the Todaro family now controls Niagara-Hamilton, Toronto, and Montreal. In March of 2017, nearly 20 years after Coppola's article, The Withered Arm, Dan Herbeck wrote a similar piece titled The Mafia is All But Dead in Western New York. In it, the FBI field office in Buffalo stated only scattered remnants that are no longer believed to be active or organized remain. The piece, also highlighted by many of the same factors that the 1998 article cited for the decline of the Buffalo crime family. However, arrests by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police in Project O'Tremens indicate the pronouncements of the Buffalo crime family's demise are overstated. In November of 2017, the FBI and the Canadian newspapers indicated the family is still active. In November of 2017, Giuseppe Joe and Domenico Violi, who have long outstanding ties to the Buffalo mob, were arrested on narcotics trafficking charges. These charges show a continuation of the long-established mafia drug trafficking triangle from Toronto, Hamilton, Ontario, to Buffalo and Montreal to New York City, established by Stefano Magadino and his cousin Joseph Bonanno. Michael McGarity, Michael McGarity of the FBI and the O'Tremens operation unearthed and dug up the roots of a partnership extending from New York City to Buffalo and Toronto to Montreal, proving once again the Italian organized crime groups have evolved far beyond the neighborhood cliques of days gone by. Additionally, Peter Edwards in the Toronto Star wrote, the arrests also hit members of the Buffalo crime family headed by the late Joe Todaro. The U.S. Department of Justice said the Canadian law enforcement authorities have arrested various members of associates of the Bonanno, Gambino, and Todaro crime families, charges that included narcotics trafficking. In response to these arrests, Canadian journalist Adrian Humphreys wrote, among those arrested in Canada are members of the Todaro organized crime family based in Buffalo, according to U.S. authorities. The Todaro crime family was built by now deceased Joseph Todaro Sr., who took over the Buffalo Mafia once led by the influential boss Stefano the Undertaker Magadino. Further, in September of 2018, Peter Edward reported that the Buffalo mob isn't dead despite some media reports. According to his article, the Buffalo Todaro crime family is strong enough to call the shots in the recent mob wars between the Musitano and other crime families in the Hamilton underworld. The article reports New York State mob still has considerable influence in the southern Ontario underworld. Sources say, quote, I don't think anyone knows for certain how this plays out. But one thing's for sure, Buffalo will always have a say north of the border. Quote, Buffalo would have to give approval for high-level killing, sources said, adding that mob leaders that are believed to have turned their backs on one side in the dispute and given, and given approval to the other. Quote, they are all supposed to be under Buffalo, one source said of the two feuding Ontario crime factions. Buffalo factions of traditional organized crime are not in Canada per se, but historically have controlled aspects of Canadian family business and do get kickbacks from profits from illicit activity. Reporters allege that Al Laverone of Ancaster was killed in September 2018 in retaliation for the May 2017 murder of Angela Musitano. Rumors circulated that the murder was related to an unpaid debt and rivalries between Niagara mobsters and influence from the Buffalo mob. Revenge was another reason for Angelo's death, James Debro indicates. This hit wasn't just approved by the Buffalo crime family, but allegedly ordered by Domenico Violi, later to be revealed as the Buffalo Mafia's underboss. Angelo's murder occurred 20 years to the month after Musitano hitman Kenneth Murdoch killed Johnny Pops, a longtime Buffalo mob captain and head of the Papalia crime family, and his right-hand man, Carmen Barilato, a Buffalo and Papalia crime family soldier. Additionally, the Toronto Sun claims that the current mob war in southern Ontario has its roots in the mob conflict that Paolo Violi and his brothers Francesco and Rocco, 
Domenico Dom and Giuseppe Giovioli's dad and uncles, murdered in Montreal during the late 1970s by the Rizzuto crime family. This was suggested as early as 2010 when a Globe and Mail article stated, a general picture is emerging of the power struggle overwhelming the Rizzutos. It's likely that the Calabresi families, largely based in Toronto and backed by big players in New York State, are seizing control after the Rizzutos pushed them aside. In 2010, Brad Hunter explained, quote, it may have taken years, but the Violi family were not going to let sleeping dogs lie. Nicola Rizzuto was gunned down on December 28, 2009, followed by the disappearance of his brother-in-law, Paolo Renda, on May 10, 2010. Renda was the Rizzuto crime family conciliari at the time of his murder. Finally, Nicola Rizzuto Sr. was killed by a sniper on November 10, 2010. On December 3, 2018, Domenico Violi was sentenced to eight years in prison for his role in the mob drug trafficking ring unearthed by Project Otremens. During the investigation, police listened in as the agent and Violi discussed a variety of criminal activity and profit-making opportunities. Violi trafficked approximately 260,000 pills to the undercover RCMP agent for more than $416,000 during which the agent was officially inducted as a made member of the Bonanno crime family in Canada. That's fucking nuts. That's like another Donnie Brasco story, dude. They fucking made this cop. That's insane. A Canadian Joe Pistone. He also received another 24000 as his cut of the profit. Wiretaps indicated Violi was made the underboss of the Buffalo crime family by boss Joe Todaro Jr. in October of 2017 in a meeting in Florida the first Canadian to hold the second highest position in the American Mafia. After being promoted to underboss, Violi is heard on wiretaps boasting that he had beaten out 30 other people for the position, indicating the Buffalo family had at least 30 made men, which included Canadian members such as the Violi brothers, the uncles Natalia and Rocco Lupino. In his new role, Violi was to assume the control over the operations of the Lupino-Violi crime and solidifying his power base with further and greater collaboration with the New York-based Mafia families. The wiretaps also revealed the activity of the commission as Violi's promotion was so unusual that Buffalo crime family boss Joe Todaro Jr. consulted with the commission for permission to promote him as Buffalo's new underboss. On January 30th, 2019, Cheche Lupino, the son of Rocco Lupino and grandson of Giacomo Lupino, was killed at his parents' Hamilton home, according to wiretaps from the Violi brothers' case. Giuseppe Violi told the undercover agent back in February of 2015 that Cheche Lupino had been approached about becoming a main member, but Cheche had told his father that if he could make money, he would be involved. But if not, he doesn't want to be involved. There are too many headaches. Hamilton police have extended their search for Lupino's killer across the Canadian border into the United States, asking Buffalo area police and news agencies to disseminate pictures of the suspect taken from surveillance cam. An attempt on Pasqua Pat Musitano's life was made outside the office of his lawyer, Joseph Irving, on the morning of April 25, 2019. According to reports, Pat was shot four times and once in the head. The Buffalo News indicated that Musitano had organized crime enemies in Montreal and Buffalo and that crime reporter Peter Edwards said he was more convinced than ever that the Buffalo mob was a player in the shooting after a source kept repeating Buffalo over and over while talking about the incident. Additionally, the CBC News in Canada reported Buffalo underboss Domenico Violi was recorded by a police informant in September of 2017 saying the murder of Angelo Musitano was meant to be a message to his brother Pat and that before Christmas Pat would be gone and that would be one headache out of their way. Of course, on July 10, 2020, Pat Musitano was shot dead in Burlington. So another spotlight, the Magadino Todaro crime family of Buffalo, which operates in Canada. I know you guys, uh, some of you said that you guys were waiting for this video. So it's out, gentlemen. You know the rules. Like, comment, and share. Let me know what you're smoking on and enjoy the rest of your Saturday afternoon. Be smart and be safe. Big Rich Queens, New York City. Salute. We'll talk soon.